All right, so for our notes, we're going to talk mainly about the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is a uh, is going to be also known as the dark reaction or the light independent reaction. I think the Calvin cycle is a little bit more accurate, um, giving credit to who uh, who developed it. It's going to be like the citric acid cycle that we're going to learn in the next chapter. And basically what it's going to do, uh, because it's a cycle, whatever it starts with, it's going to need to end with and regenerate before the process is over. What actually ends up happening during the Calvin cycle is that we will be building uh, sugar molecules. And we do that by making ATP and from the power of the electrons from the NADPH. Both of these two came from those two photosystems. Uh, they also call this the carbon fixation. And uh, in that process, we need, uh, we need CO2. And what's interesting to note here, a big highlight thing that I would do for you, is notice we need CO2 and we generate G3P is what it's called. We don't actually make sugar yet. We're just making this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. On the test and a fill-in-the-blank section, whatever, you can refer to it simply as G3P, but it's this material here. We will eventually take these and make them into sh uh, sugars and then eventually into uh, glucose and sucrose. But for now, we're just going to make some G3P. And when to do this, we must be able to do this cycle three times, and we need three molecules of CO2 to make one G3P. Now, there's only going to be uh, three carbons in there. To make an entire glucose molecule, you'll need to do this process six times. So you might want to remember those numbers. There's three phases that we will look through uh, during this process, and in class when you get back, we'll actually uh, break down these three in a little bit more detail, watch videos on them, but we have what we call the carbon fixation stage, the reduction stage, and then the final receptor of that CO2 that we started uh, with. So we got it basically what we start with. This last stage is rebuilding it. There's the reduction stage using the NADPH, and the carbon fixation stage. Uh, it is catalyzed by an enzyme. Now, enzymes usually have a really end in ACE. This is an exception. Rubisco is the enzyme that we're going to need for this process. So here we go. I'll kind of point out the stuff that you need to know, like Rubisco, the enzyme that's going to process it. You will have CO2, and notice it says enter once at a time. So there's a CO2 with an enter in, go through the process, another one, another one. And so as you go through, Rubisco is going, this is all happening in the stroma. You're going to need ATP. Remember I told you this was an energy-rich reaction. It needs a lot of energy. In the very first part, the carbon fixation stage, we need 6 ATP in order to do this. And uh, in the process, what we're doing is we're just getting the carbons attached to this original molecule that we start with. All right, now we have the phase 2 reductions. Now, and during this process, during reduction, we don't need the ATP. We need those NADPHs. Okay, the NADPHs are going to create this G3P that we mentioned earlier that's really important. Um, and from that, you're going to actually be able to make glucose and other compounds. So you do need to know that G3P, as I said, Rubisco, this stuff right here, that's not terms that we're going to need to learn. You do need to know where the ATP is used, where the uh, NADPH is used, and so on. The last thing we need to do is we need, now that we have this, we need to go back and get into the, uh, the original molecule. And the last is that uh, the stage of this, once again, is going to be where we're going to get the uh, back to this product here, the, the RUBP. Don't need to know that name. But when we do that, we need some more ATP in order to do that, and we, get with what we, we start with what we end with. Notice, 9 ATP in this process, and all we get out of this is one half of what will be eventually a glucose molecule. So all this stuff goes in to make the uh, end product here, uh, right here. So a lot of energy required, and you should know those as you go through. I really like this diagram. It might be a good opportunity for you to kind of write this down. Uh, it talks about where the things are at, where's, what's needed, and where does it occur, and it kind of has a summary on this side, okay? So the fixation, I uh, need 3 CO2. The reduction, we need 6 ATP, 6 NADPH, and eventually gets us 1 G3P, and then we need the 3 ATP again to regenerate our original to go back. 
The whole process requires nine ATP, um, three carbon dioxides, and six NADPHs. And then that's just kind of a summary with the major parts that you need to know. All of them you should be able to label on a chart during the process. The end products of this, the NADPH and the PI, will feed back into the light reaction where they're reproduced and so on. Okay? All right. The G3P can be converted into starch for storage, amino acids or fatty acids, or even sucrose to export to other cells. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll also play, uh, put some videos on over the Calvin Cycle in class. Uh, please take notes and bring those notes to class. Thanks. Have a good day.